all said Jonathan was going to win, that God spoke to you, Jonathan was going to win. But your God, who spoke to you, he never showed up at the party. He never showed up. Why is it that you have to resolve, Pastor Adeboye, to telling your people and all your churches all over the world not to listen to Sunday Delaja? People like Olukoya. Why do you have to take Showare to court? Why don't you call on God to punish Showare? You are representing your ego. Answered by fire, he will be my God. God that answered by fire, let him be my God. Well, this is under Elijah here. I'm here to do a challenge to and for Nigerian pastors and geos. Now, why am I doing this challenge and what is the challenge? It's going to be called the Elijah challenge. So, this Elijah challenge is what I am throwing, a challenge that I am throwing out to the pastors and geos in Nigeria, especially the mainstream churches, the popular churches that we know. I am Sunday Adelaja, and I come to say today that if you know that I am the one who is wrong, all these pastors in Nigeria who are saying that I'm the Antichrist and that what I'm doing and the message of reform reformation that I'm bringing, that it is error, that I've lost my mind, and that this is just anti-Christ activity that I and my team are doing in the internet. Well, because of that, I am coming with this challenge to anyone who is a Nigerian Jew or a Nigerian Christian or a Nigerian uh, pastor that believes that he's preaching the right gospel and you are preaching the gospel just like every other Nigerian person and you believe it. Now, I'm not talking to the people who are the remnants. I know that in Nigeria, we always have 7,000 remnants. In e everywhere, God talks about remnants. I know that we have remnants in Nigeria as well. But I'm talking about 90% of all the churches in Nigeria who are Pentecostals and Charismatics, that we are not preaching the right gospel. We have polluted the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. So I come today with this Elijah challenge. If you say, I am wrong, Call on your God and let him silence me. But I come today to say, I am the one that is correct. And I know the God that I serve. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. I know that he is correct. He is the one that I stand for. And like Elijah stood in the Old Testament against the prophets of Baal and the Asherah. I come today to stand against all these big geos and pastors in Nigeria who have polluted the gospel and who are now preaching the false gospel in Nigeria, the gospel of mammon. And I come to say that you people are the ones who are troubling Israel. You are the troublers of Israel. But like Ahab, you are calling me the troubler of Israel. No, like Elijah, I'm standing today to say, no, you and your priests and people who follow you are the ones troubling the nation of Nigeria. And the pastors we have today, they are the pastors who are like the priests of Baal and Asheron. But I stand today like Martin Luther, the reformer, and I present to you my challenge. And I'm saying, you people who are preaching this gospel of prosperity, who are preaching this gospel of mammon, you are the troublers of Israel. That I come today in the name of God Almighty, in the name of God of Israel, in the name of God of Isaac, in the name of God of Jacob. And I'm saying, if you know your God, do something. Let your God do something. Let him stop this revolution. Let your God kill me, for example. Let your God come and stop what we have been doing. Especially now that you have just gathered in December, you all gathered millions of people in your churches. You gathered millions of people all over Africa, all over the world. Now you are anointed, right? You've done your conventions and, and your meetings and your praise and worship and your experience and your congresses. So God is with you. You build your temple. So God must be with you now, isn't it? So call. I'm, I'm taunting you like Elijah taunted the priest of Baal. I'm taunting you also. Call upon your God to stop this revolution. Call upon your God to kill Sunday. Call upon your God. If you really know you are representing the God Almighty and you are preaching the right gospel, call upon him. 
to stop this movement or to stop myself. But if your God is not killing me and is not stopping this movement, then it means that we are the ones who are correct, that you are preaching the wrong gospel. The God that answered by fire, let him be the God. The God that answered by fire, let him be God. And I'm standing here to say, I believe that what I am saying is correct and the reformation that we are calling for is correct and that God is on our side. So I throw a challenge to all of you. Let's talk about economy. In the area of economy, if you really believe that you are serving the living God, let your God fix Nigeria. Let your God fix the economy of the country. You've been here. You've been in Nigeria for 30-something years. Some of you have been there all your lives. You've been praying to this God. You are having all these meetings, praying to God every day, every, every year, all conventions, millions of people gathering. Is this God deaf? Is he blind? My God is not deaf. My God is not blind. So I declare that from the day I get to Nigeria, 10 years from that day, that you will see a new Nigeria. You will see a new Nigeria. Because my gospel works. The gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ works. But you people, the reason why this gospel is not working for you is that you have stopped preaching the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. The gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ works, and I've proved it in Ukraine, and I'm coming to Nigeria to prove it. That in the next 10 years after I come back to Nigeria, you will see the proof that Nigeria will be a changed country. I am going to preach the right gospel. And Nigerians are going to believe the right gospel. And Nigerians are going to begin to practice the right gospel. And when they practice the right gospel, that right gospel is going to change the economy and the destiny of Nigeria. What you have done the last 30 years that you have been preaching this prosperity gospel in Nigeria is that you have destroyed the country. And the country is getting worse and worse because you are taking the money of the people, you are enriching yourself, the only people who are rich are the bishops and geos. That means that you have preached an egocentric gospel, a selfish gospel that has only enriched you but impoverished the people. So I come like Elijah today and I throw the challenge out to you geos to you bishops and to you senior pastors, if you believe that you are preaching the right gospel, call upon that God. Let God come and speak for you. If he's not speaking for you, then it means that your gospel is not working and it means you are not preaching the right gospel. Okay, let's talk about politics. Four years ago during the election, you all said Jonathan was going to win, that God spoke to you, Jonathan was going to win. Jonathan had been chosen by God. But your God, who spoke to you, he never showed up at the party. He never showed up. And your Jonathan lost. Why? Because you are not representing God. You are representing yourself. You are representing your stomach. You are representing your ego, your own ministry. You are building your empires. And that is what all these pastors are doing in Nigeria. You want me to throw you another challenge? Another Elijah challenge? If you know that you are serving the God Almighty, call upon him. Let him make Atiku that you are supporting this time. Let him make him win. Let him make him win. And I'm going to say he's going to lose. He's going to lose. If you know that you are right and that your God is God, make him pray to your God. Gather two million, five million again. Let your candidate come and win. Because this God is not your God. Because you don't know him. Your attitude, your fruits show that you don't know this God. And that's why he's not going to win. And that is politically. But let me even challenge people like Olukoya. You, Olukoya, they call you man of God, and you call yourself a mountain of fire, and you are teaching people to call fire, fire down every day. You know you are deceiving people because you don't believe in that fire you are calling. If you had believed in the God Almighty and that he can send fire to consume people like Elijah did, it worked for Elijah. Why is it not working for you? You say it works for you? If it works for you, why do you have to take Showare to court? Why don't you call on God to punish Showare? Because you don't know God. You only know judges in Nigeria that you could bribe. You only have connection with men. You don't have connection with God. Because if you had had connection with God, you would have called upon God. God would have stopped Showare. Why is it that right now you want to take a little girl, Mayowa, you want to take her to court? You want to go and sue her because she's criticizing your doctrine. Why can't you talk to God to stop her? Are you not mountain on fire? Let your God send down fire now. The, the God that answers by fire, let him be God. Call upon your God. Let him send fire to consume Mayowa or Chowore. 
Why is it that you cannot do that with all your prayers, with all your power change hands, and nothing is working? Your God is deaf? Only your judges are not deaf. Your human judges and your courts are here to protect you, but not God of heaven. So I know that you don't have connection with God. Is you are just exploiting people, building your own empire, taking people's money, and making them your slaves. That's what not just Olokoya is doing, that's what most of these GOs are doing. Let me talk about Pastor Deboye. Pastor Deboye, you gather your pastors and you told them that they are supposed to pray and fast. You all prayed and fast that God will remove us from the stage, myself and Daddy Freeze. What happened after your fasting? 40 days is over right now. Long time. We are still here. Your God didn't answer. Fire didn't come down to consume us. We didn't die. I'm not dead. You said we are going to go mad? Well, you might think I'm mad right now, but I'm, I'm, I know I'm not mad. The whole world knows I'm not mad, that the freeze is not mad. All the people who are watching us are not mad. Why is it that you have to resolve, Pastor Adeboye, to telling your people and all your churches all over the world not to listen to Sunday Delaja? You have to put them in the bondage of slavery not to listen to Sunday Delaja and Daddy Freeze. Because you know the truth that if they listen, the truth shall set them free. You know the truth shall set them free. You know the truth shall set them free. And that's why you will not allow them to listen to us. You will not allow them to listen to the truth. Because if they listen to the truth, the shackles will be broken. And they will no more be your slaves anymore. They will no more be taking money to you anymore. I declare to all of you and all Nigerians and to the whole world that these people are serving the God of Mammon. They are serving their own interests. They are not serving the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. If that is the case, call upon him. Because the only thing you can do right now is to go to another judge that you, you already know who is a member of your church to take us to court and sue us. But you cannot do more than that. But you cannot go to the court of heavens and have God to silence us. You cannot go to the court of heavens and call upon God to send down fire like Elijah did. But I am telling you that we preach the right gospel. And the proof is that let your people begin to listen to us freely. As soon as they begin to listen to us freely, the God of fire, the God of Elijah will be on our side because that God will begin to set your people free and your pockets will begin to be empty and your church will begin to be empty. Oh, you're building cathedrals and all that. Go and pray there now. Is the God there? If God is there, let him answer in those cathedrals. And I'm telling you that those cathedrals, God doesn't live in cathedrals that are built by the hands of men. God is not living in those cathedrals. God is living in the hands of men. Let's come back to the gospel of the kingdom. That is why I'm doing this. Let's come back to the gospel of the kingdom. And I have alleged many times in hundreds of my videos that these mainstream Pentecostal charismatic churches in Nigeria, that they are not serving God Almighty. They are serving the God of Mammon. They are preaching syncretism. They are preaching paganistic gospel. If I am wrong, talk to God if it's your God. Is it not the same God like the God of Elijah? Is it not the same God that Archbishop Idaosa served when Archbishop Idaosa challenged the Congress of Witches that was planning to do Congress in the city? God answered and silenced the Congress of Witches. He shut down the Witches Congress Conference or Congress. God of Elijah answered Idaosa. Why is he not answering you today? Because you preach and not that gospel. So why do I have the audacity to come and challenge you and to declare what I declare? Because I stand on the word of Paul that if anybody will preach another gospel other than this gospel that has been handed to us, that they should be not just be challenged, but they should be accused. That even if you are angels, I don't care if you are angels, that you are preaching a different gospel, no. As long as we are doing that, this reformation shall stand. We are going to condemn the evil practices, the wrong gospel that is being preached in our continent and our country. It is our country also. It is our continent also. Yes, we might be living outside of the continent right now, but we are coming back to show the right gospel, to preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ like the missionaries preached it, to restore the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ to Africa, to preach the gospel that I have preached in Europe that has converted Europeans, it has converted Americans, it has converted Asians, it has warped 
and has brought the citizens of more than 50 countries to the gospel. The gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ works everywhere. But the reason it's not working in Nigeria, and Nigeria is only getting worse and worse, is because we don't even notice there that we are no longer preaching the gospel. We, we didn't notice when we shifted from the gospel of the kingdom to the gospel of mammon, to the gospel of self, to the gospel of egocentrism. Well, I decided to do this because you love Elijah. You all love to preach about Elijah, right? The Old Testament is your favorite platform to preach. And Elijah is your hero. Wow, good for you. Go call on him. Go call on your God. Let him do what he did for Elijah. Because I know that God is not on your side. I'm so confident of that. That's why I have the audacity to come and do what I'm doing right now. I am so confident that you have lost God. You who have left God. It's not me who is the Antichrist. I'm not the one that is the troubler of Israel. Like Ahab said, you had the people walking in the spirit of Ahab. And you had the people representing the praise of Baal. And I say, you wait. Very soon, we are going to appear on the continent. And when we arrive, we are going to come with the truth of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Africa will experience transformation. Africa will experience change everywhere, economically, politically, socially, and spiritually. And the God that answered by fire, then shall be our God once again. Let us repent. Let us come back to the gospel. And this same God that is the same yesterday, today, and forever will deliver our continent, Africa. For the love of God, church, and nation, here I stand. I will not change my position. Like Martin Luther, I say, no turning back, no retreating. I stand on the truth, and the truth shall set my continent and my country free. Let's come back to the gospel of the kingdom and we shall be saved.